The mystic and the scientist both attend the same layered intelligence, the grand and precise artistry of existence. Father Reason The universe is a form of divine law, your reasonable father. When you feel ungrateful to him, the shapes of the world seem mean and ugly. Make peace with that father, the elegant patterning, and every experience will fill with immediacy. Because I love this, I am never bored, and beauty constantly wells up, a noise of spring water in my ear and in my inner being. Three limbs rise and fall like the ecstatic arms of those who have submitted to the message of life. 145 Leaf sounds talk together like poets making fresh metaphors. The green felt cover slips, and we get a flash of the mirror underneath. Think how it will be when the whole thing is away. I tell only one more thousandth of what I see. There's so much doubt everywhere. The conventional opinion of this poetry is, it shows great optimism for the future. The father reason says, no ancient ounce of future, the ancient ounce of the future, the ancient desire, satisfied by the moment's energy here in your hand.
something that gets you your help. Your intelligence will eventually solve you. Yes, you need to tell me how to give it so that it feels fine. It's not so possible to monitor it. You can help me push and help me. All friends, your intelligence will be able to push me in the position of an asshole. Thank you. 
amazing. You could have never heard anything back. This longing you express is the return message. The grief you cry out from draws you toward union. Is your pure sadness that wants help with the sacred cup. Listen to the moan of a dog for its master. That whining is the connection. There are love dogs no one knows the names of. Give your life to be one of them. Cry out in your weakness. A dragon was pulling a bear into its terrible mouth. A courageous man went and rescued the bear. There are such helpers in the world, who rush to save anyone who cries out. Like mercy itself, they run toward the screaming. And they can't be bought off. If you were to ask one of those, why did you come so quickly? He or she would say, because I heard your helplessness. Where Lowland is, that's where water goes. All medicine wants is pain to cure. And don't just ask for one mercy. Let them flood in. Let the sky open under your feet. Take the cotton out of your ears, the cotton of consolation, so you can hear the sphere music. Push the hair out of your eyes. Blow the phlegm from your nose, and from your brain. Let the wind breeze through. Leave no residue in yourself from that bilious fever. Take the cure for impotence. See 56 feet. That your manhood may shoot forth, and a hundred new beings come of your coming. Tear the binding from around the foot of your soul, and let it race around the track in front of the crowd. Loosen the knot of grief so tight on your neck. Accept your new good luck. Give your weakness to one who helps. Crying out loud and weeping are great resources. A nursing mother, all she does is wait to hear her child. Just a little beginning whimper, and she's there. God created the child, that is, your wanting, so that it might cry out, so that milk might come. Cry out, don't be stolid and silent with your pain. Lament, and let the milk of loving flow into you. The hard rain and wind or waves the cloud has to take care of us. Be patient. Respond to every call that excites your spirit. Ignore those that make you fearful and sad, that degrade you back toward disease and death. The debtor shake. Sheikh Ahmad was continually in debt. He borrowed great sums from the wealthy and gave it out to the poor dervishes of the world. He built a Sufi monastery by borrowing CS5. And God was always paying his debts, turning sand into flour for this generous friend. The prophet said that there were always two angels praying in the market. One said, Lord, give the poor wanderer help. The other, Lord, give the miser a poison. Especially loud is the former prayer when the wanderer is a prodigal like Sheikh Ahmad, the debtor Sheikh. For years, until his death, he scattered seed profusely. Even very near his death, with the signs of death clear, he sat surrounded by predators. The predators in a circle, and the great shape in the center gently melting into himself like a candle. The predators were so sour-faced with glory that they could hardly breathe. Look at these despairing men, thought the shape. Do they think God does not have 400 gold dinars? Just at that moment a boy outside called, Halva, a sixth of a dirham for a piece. Fresh Halva, Sheikh Ahmad, with a nod of his head, directed the famulus to go and buy the whole tray of Halva. Maybe if these predators eat a little sweetness, they won't look so bitterly on me. The servant went to the boy, how much for the whole lump of halva? 
half a dinar, and some change. Don't ask too much from Suppas, my son. Half a dinar is enough. The boy handed over the tray, and the servant brought it to the shape, who passed it among his creditor guests. Please, eat, and be happy. The tray was quickly empty, and the boy asked the shape for his half a gold dinar. I-58. Where would I find such money? These men can tell you how in debt I am, and besides, I am fast on my way into non-existence. The boy threw the tray on the floor and started weeping loud and yelling, I wish I had broken my legs before I came in here. I wish I'd stayed in the bathhouse today. You gluttonous, plague looking suffus, washing your faces like cats. A crowd gathered. The boy continued, Oh Sheikh, my master will beat me if I come back without anything. The creditors joined in, How can you do this? You've devoured our properties, and now you add this one last bet before you die. Why? The Sheikh closes his eyes and does not answer. The boy weeps until afternoon prayers. The Sheikh withdraws underneath his coverlet, pleased with everything, pleased with eternity, pleased with death, and totally unconcerned with all the reviling talk around him. On a bright moon night, do you think the moon, cruising through the tent house, can hear the dogs barking down here? But the dogs are doing what they're supposed to do. Water does not lose its purity because of a bit of weed floating in it. That king drinks wine on the riverbank until dawn, listening to the water music, not hearing the frog talk. The money he the boy would have been just a few pennies from each of his creditors, but the sheikh's spiritual power prevents that from happening. No one gives the boy anything. 59. At afternoon prayers a servant comes with a tray from Adam, a friend of Ahmad's, and a man of great property. A covered tray. The Sheikh uncovers the face of the tray, and on it there are 400 gold DMNARS, and in one corner, another half of the Nar wrapped in a piece of paper. Immediately the cries of abasement, O King of Sheikhs, Lord of the Lords of Mystery. Forgive us. We were bumbling and crazed. We were knocking lamps over. We were. It's all right. You will not be held responsible for what you've said or done. The secret here is that I asked God and the way was shown that until the boy is weeping, God's merciful generosity was not listened. Let the boy be like the people of your eye. If you want to wear a robe of spiritual sovereignty, let your eyes weep with the wanting. You did come to birth and bring the mysteries, your voice thunder makes us very happy. Roar! Lion of the heart, and tear me open. I, O, Z5 P teaching stories. How the unseen world works. On the unseen. Ibn Khafif Shirazi tells this story. I heard that there were two great masters in Egypt, so I hurried to reach their presence. When I arrived, I saw two magnificent teachers meditating. I greeted them three times, but they did not answer. I meditated with them for four days. Each day I begged them to talk with me, since I had come such a long way. Finally the younger one opened his eyes. Ibn Kafi, life is short. Use the portion that's left to deepen yourself. Don't waste time greeting people. I asked him to give me some advice. Stay in the presence of those who remind you of your Lord, who not only speak wisdom, but are that. Then he went back into meditation. Ibn
Ibn Qasid was being taught the importance of having his own experience of the unseen, and not to fret so much about the forms of dreaming people, hearing wisdom, and about what we should be doing. There is a South Indian story about soap. Soap is the dirt we buy. We introduce it to the dirt we have, and the two dirts are so glad to see each other they come out and mix. They swim together in the warm pleasure of a water and, at just the right moment, the washer lifts the cloth of our tree being free of both soap and dirt. Mystical poetry and other practices may function this way, as soap that dances with what disturbs our clarity. Then at some moment they drop away and leave us clean, ready to be worn again. N-A-S-U-H Some time ago there was a man named Nasa. He made his living shampooing women in a bathhouse. He had a face like a woman, but he was not a feminist, though he disguised his virility, so as to keep his job. C6I he loved touching the wonder as he washed their hair. He stayed sexually alert, at full strength, all the time, massaging the beautiful women, especially the princess and her ladies in waiting. Sometimes he thought of changing jobs, of doing something where he wouldn't be so constantly lustful, but he couldn't quit. He went to a mystic saint and said, Please remember me in a prayer. That holy man was spiritually free, and totally open to God. He knew not so secret, but with God's gentleness he didn't speak it. A Gnostic says little, but inside he is full of mysteries, and crowded with voices. Whoever is served that cup keeps quiet, the holy man laughed softly and prayed aloud, May God cause you to change your life in the way you know you should. The prayer of such a shape is different from other prayers. He has so completely dissolved his ego, nothing himself, that what he says is like God talking to God. How could such a prayer not be granted? The means were found to change NASA. While he was pouring water into a basin for a naked woman, she felt and discovered that a pearl was missing from her earring. Quickly, they locked the doors. They searched the cushions, the towels, the rugs, and the discarded clothes. Nothing. Now they search ears and mouths in every cleft and orifice. Everyone is made to strip, and the queen's lady chamberlain, Z-62 Probes one by one the naked women NASA, meanwhile, has gone to his private closet, trembling I didn't steal the pearl, but if they undress and search me, they'll see how excited I get with these new ladies God, please, help me I have been cold and lecherous, but cover my sin this time, please let me not be exposed for how I've been. I'll repent. He weeps and moans and weeps, for the moment is upon him. NASA, we have searched everyone but you. Come out. At that moment his spirit grows wings and lifts. His ego falls like a battered wall. He unites with God, alive, but emptied of NASA. His ship sinks and in its place moves the ocean waves. His body's disgrace, like a falcon's loose and binding, slips from the falcon's foot. His stones drink in water. His field shines like satin with gold threads in it. Someone dead a hundred years steps out well and strong and handsome. A broken stick breaks into bud. This all happens inside NASA, after the call that gave him such fear. A long pause.